Yay, thanks, Sean. So quick recap. Here's the here's the question of the day. It's very exciting. But really, we want to talk about these practitioner guides. Um, Don, do you want me to take it? Do you want to take it over? Take it away. Um, I'll, I'll briefly and then you can then you can take over because you have you have the pertinent questions. Um, but I'm super excited. We've been working on these for a long time. Uh, thank you to everybody who gave me feedback on them. And we've launched with the first four in the series. So there's a link to the blog post. Uh, if you go to the Slack channel, the general Slack, uh, there are links that you can share to LinkedIn and Mastodon and, and Twitter. But it was super exciting. So we're launching with uh, the intro, of course, and then responsiveness, contributor sustainability, and organizational participation. So... I was uh, very excited to finally get these these four live, and then we're we're still working on them. So we have more in the pipeline. We have some proposals that are still looking for contributors. So if you are really good at interpreting metrics and making improvements based on them, uh, please feel free to uh, grab one of the guides and start working on it. You can also propose new guides, whether you want to develop it or not. If there's a guide that you really want to see and you don't want to develop it, you can propose that too. So we're also looking for contributions. All right, somebody needs to be muted. I think Peculiar needs to mute. Got it. Well, I thought I did. Yep. All right. Cool. Thanks, Peculiar. And then Elizabeth had some questions about uh, what this has done to our poor navigation bar. <laughs> I did. So as you can see, it's crowded. Doesn't, it's not happy. So I'm wondering if we, how we feel about moving events under community. Is that something we can do? Or do we have other suggestions on how we can kind of make this less like this? <laughs> I, My think, other question, uh... I, I do have another question. Um, so the, I know it's great to have translations. Um, but most pages that's just kind of broken on. So I'm curious, do we actually have the translations implemented on a lot of the pages? Like, is that useful for people? Or because if we got rid of that, that would give us a fair bit of, because it's kind of a big bar in the navigation, bigger than most translation bars are, I think. It's a, it's a plugin that, yeah. that uses a shared service to automatically quote unquote do the translations. So. It could be at a different place as well in the page. Um, yeah, yeah, it's not a bad, it's not a bad point, John. That that does take up a fair amount of space on that. To Elizabeth's question, I do think community events could go under community, and I think that would make a ton of sense. We don't have that many. Um, I did you, also. Uh... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Don. Can you explain what you mean by broken? That the translation is broken, and then oh, also I... I would like to remind everyone that we just we did spend a year trying to uh, reduce the size of the navigation, so uh, making it bigger again is uh, kind of counter to what we were doing prior. And I'll just leave it at that. Okay, earlier when I clicked on a couple of the translations on pages, um, I got errors, and now I'm not getting errors. So I think maybe it was temporarily um, glitchy, but it seems it to be fine. Seems yeah, to be it fine. does rely on us. It relies on a third-party service, so it probably was just down or glitching earlier. Yeah, I think maybe it was just bad luck. I tried it at the wrong time. I know there are different ways we can um, represent this, and I did look at making that a little smaller, but there, this is really the clearest one that is the smallest. The others did not really, uh, I don't think they were very intuitive, but yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah. So we think maybe we can try moving events under community to tighten it up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, I'm like trying to go through all the drop downs too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like under about, for example, like, so I think what you propose is at least a good first step 
but probably want to think about it just in terms of making room at that top level. Yeah. If, if we put events under community, maybe calendar would go under there as well, because that would be the other top level one where events could go because they're kind of, they exist in time. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm not the only one. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, I, I agree with you. I agree with what you're saying uh, categorically there. The, the class mm -hmm. of information is similar. I think calendar is only at the top level right now because we refer people to it so much. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like, I, oh, go ahead. I guess you could take, you could potentially just sort of have a think about information architecture generally because I wonder if metrics and software and guides are all kind of resources and then maybe they could go together. But yeah, I mean, you don't want to necessarily just hide everything under vague titles. Maybe that's not helpful. I agree with Alice, though. It might be, I mean, maybe a temporary fix now to make it uh, better, but I think maybe taking a broader look at the information architecture might be worthwhile. And taking another look at the home page, I think, too. Yeah, because I think as Kevin points out, and I agree, like as soon as you move events under community, it's going to be the only thing that like has a drop down and then another drop down. You, you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Sylvia, can you mute? I think you're picking up some background noise. Thank you. Um. So like if you click on events right now, or just point to it, like it has previous chaos content, which is its own thing. And if you move that under community, it's gonna be like right now, every drop down, I guess it, it is like that. Never mind. Yeah, it'll just it'll just be it'll like just be like that. Yeah, it's just it's the only one that has many. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I agree. Let's just do that. I mean, we you know, we could also put all these just like on a on a page somewhere and just have an event. Yeah. Just yeah, that it. doesn't need to be a menu anymore. It's a little bit much for a menu at this point. Yeah. I wanted to touch the bottom of the screen. It's <laughs> <laughs> on a, a one laptop per child, I'm sure it does. <laughs> yeah, we could we could have the link to those previous chaos cons. We could create it as some sort of footer content for that page. So we'd always have the new chaos con and then the, at the bottom we'd have the, the link to the previous chaos cons. That, that'd be okay. That's a good idea. And would we still then, we would still need to move it over to make yeah, space. You could still move it. Yeah, okay. just to give that top level. So we're kind of, seems like we're in agreement. Yes. And let's move the old chaos cons to links at the bottom of the events page. So like there'll be, so it would be like this is just kind of like the la the latest one. And then we just put the links to the previous ones under here. Is that what you were saying, Kevin? Or are you saying a whole new like landing page for events? Are you I'm Kevin? sorry, I, I was muted. And then I was also, I wasn't looking at your screen. So I didn't see that. Oh, I was just saying like, so whatever is the current kind of chaos con would go here and then the links would just be at the bottom of that page. Or are you saying we should have? Yeah, yeah, we just uh, okay. create some footer content underneath that organizing committee that uh, that links to pad the past event pages. Okay, at the bottom of the current event page. Okay, yeah, I think that makes sense. I, Cause I don't know that people are, hey, I wonder what happened in, 2018. I would like to see what I don't even know what happens if you click on these. Please go somewhere. <laughs> I was like, I don't even know. So we still have the pages if we ever want to know. Oh, yeah, conference presentation. Oh, yeah, we haven't been doing that. That's good. Me. Idea. All yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've been doing that like for a while. So maybe we can. Um, aside, side quest. 
maybe add reference recordings to old pages of chaos comics. Okay. All right. Um, going back to the practitioner guys, which is what brought us on this journey to begin with. Uh, we do have this blog post, as Don said, so please help us um, spread the word. Uh, and also do the other things that she said to do. Any other final things on practitioner guides? Nope. Good to see him, Good okay. to see him published. Yeah. Also, I learned I can't spell practitioner on the first try. I can't. I can't do it. I. I always the hard write word. Oh, I good. Don't... I'm not the only one. Nope. So weird. Yeah. Very strange. All right. Um, we are going to be sending going on to the next topic. Then we are going to be sending this out probably today. So if um, people want to just check it out and see what it looks like, that'd be great. Offer any suggestions. I'll probably send it out this afternoon and like maybe like an hour or two hours something. So if you have a minute, just flip, flip through it. See if you see anything glaring or omissions or something that needs to be fixed. And I will fix it. Thank you, Elizabeth. You're welcome. Thank you. And I did. Thank you for being. Thank you. Thank you for being our. Thank you for being our fixer. Yeah, you're welcome. I am the fixer. Um, Armstrong, to your point last week about why people didn't attend, I did add that in. Uh, it's something I don't think we've really asked about before, so I did have a place for them to tell us why and if there's maybe anything that we can do to make it easier. So hopefully we'll get some feedback on that. Okay, uh, anything else on that before I move on? Okay, so here's another announcement. All these things are happening in chaos. We have a new podcast organizer by the name of Alice. Thank you so much, Alice. You are awesome and amazing. Alice also did booth duty last week, even though she's a relatively newer chaotic, so she's amazing. Yay. Anything to add on that, Alice or Dawn? No, but I'm super excited. Thanks, Alice. Here for it. I'm just uh, I'm still learning. <laughs> Going to be asking all the uh, obvious questions, I think, start off with. Well, you know who to go to if you do have questions. Um, Georg can also answer questions, too, because he did, did the cast for a long time, too, cast cast. Yeah, and I can help too, Alice. Like I help with the payments for the editing and stuff like that. So just <clears throat> when all that needs to be done, go ahead and loop me in as well. So there's a lot of us. Yes, we won't leave one of them. <laughs> We're like, good luck. See you later. Okay. Um, bossy track. We'll put this on here. We'd like to talk about that. Um, I did mostly because I noticed that the track proposals are up now. Um, Fossey scheduled for August, early August. Um, I know we had submitted a track last year that wasn't accepted. I didn't know if we wanted to do that again. I just wanted to share that the form was now active. Um, I didn't see a deadline. Um, so I don't know when they do now. Due. <laughs> <laughs> I do now. Oh, there it is. I think oh. we may have missed our window of opportunity. You missed it already. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh. <laughs> That's right. Hey, That's right. Thing to do. <laughs> organizing a track and it's not, at something like this is a lot of work anyway. So maybe maybe we're better off submitting to the other tracks that get accepted. Yeah. Well, in that case, disregard and when they release the tracks, we can re forward that if folks want to participate. I I, I highly enjoyed this event last year. Um, so I would recommend it for folks that are can make the trip to Portland. And that's it. Thank you. It was a really good conference, very well run last year. So A plus. Thanks for bringing that up anyway, Sophia. I hadn't even seen that. Yeah. I mean, I barely even noticed they were open. I feel like it's been under the radar the whole time a little bit. So uh, appreciate you. GitHub Copilot in Africa. Who wants to talk about this? This is me. I just wanted to give people an update that uh, GitHub is going to be providing um, 250 co-pilot licenses to help us take a look at 
Hope Copilot uh, can impact the lives of folks across Africa. And Ruth is going to be leading a lot of this work, and she's going to be doing kind of five different workshops with folks who may be interested across Africa, in North Africa, Central Africa, South Africa, Southern Africa, East Africa, and West Africa. And um, in these workshops, describe what Copilot is and try to understand how um, people hope that Copilot can help in their work life or their personal life. And then just continue to talk with people over the course of, of a year and see, seeing the impact of these types of tools um, and people being able to participate in open source or build their tech careers. So I just wanted to bring that forward to people, uh, let y'all know. And Matt, just to clarify, this is technically not a chaos project though, right? Like yeah so i mean this is i just wanted to bring this here because it involved me and, and ruth <laughs> you know i mean like there's, yeah, no, no. Not, like there's people yeah yep. and it's open to like volunteers from here and yeah, like exactly. okay kind of the just, way we talk about like all in here right. sometimes yep. Yep. yep okay perfect yep. uh any questions for matt or ruth i don't know if ruth's on here today let's see ruth well, she's joined recently so I guess Matt will have to field all the questions on his own. I can do my best. <laughs> all right. If people would like to get involved with that project, I would say reach out to either Matt or Ruth. Is that mm -hmm. fair? So okay. That's fair. Yep. Awesome. Uh, is there is there like a list somewhere of like the actual roles that are needed or anything like that? Okay. No, no I think Ruth is actually working on that like today. Okay. So, and this is really new. Like we were able to make this connection at OSS, excuse me, OSSNA in Seattle. So, I mean, this is like two weeks, two weeks old. I still keep thinking OSSNA was last week. Like I kind of missed all of last week. Like, I don't know what happened. It feels that way. Yeah. <laughs> it was two weeks ago, Chaos Con was already over, you know? Yeah, I can't, I can't handle, I can't handle it. Um, okay, I'm guessing that you put this on here as well, Matt? Yeah, I just wanted to give people an update that the book chapter the, that we've been kind of talking about with the to-do group is at least in a workable form. Um, so thanks to Alice for kind of, you know, helping out, kind of connect this with other book chapters. It still needs quite a bit of work. That's completely fine. Um, but Don, I'm hoping, I'm not going to be able to, to make the OSPO meeting this week, but if you could kind of bring this up to people, that would be really helpful. Um, yeah, I, I already added it to the agenda. So that okay, we can, perfect, thank you. I'll just, I'll just so, let people know. I'll, I'll point people to, to this for review, basically. Okay, that'd be great. And so you can kind of see the structure that I used here was about impact. That seemed to be, when I looked at the notes that we had, thinking about how OSPOs can use metrics to, to demonstrate impact, and so I, this is arranged around, again, this is all conversation. So ecosystem impact, partner impact, community impact, and company impact. And so you can see like around ecosystem impact, Don, there's like questions, other, other, like what would be other questions that you might want to ask yourself around, around impact? So if you scroll down to the bo bottom on like page four, um, I would love to, not that far, um, I would, yeah, stop. So, <laughs> no more scrolling. So, <laughs> um, Don, I would love to include the practitioner guides here as well. I'm, I'm not sure how to do that yet. So basically, we have that goal question metric approach. And what I would like to do out of the book chapter is Kind of leave folks who may read this chapter or be you know reading reading this book with not just like here's a metric like age of an issue i'm not sure that that's going to do a lot of people any good if they read this chapter and they're thinking about impact maybe it will but the practitioner guides just seem so much more geared towards the audience that would read this type of chapter mm -hmm. and thinking about ways to get those guides to connect with those impact stories above seems really sensible to me as opposed to those atomic metrics but 
Okay. Do you want me to, um, do you want me to rewrite that section and have a section on practitioner guides and talk about how it connects to the stuff above or, yeah. do you want me I mean, to try to weave, or try to weave it through the other, whatever you I think, think is probably better as a, sec a section. Yeah. Whatever is more graceful. Okay. I'll, I'll have a look at that tomorrow. Okay. I just, I think they're a better fit than the goal question metric approach where we just leave people with a particular metric that doesn't seem to help people too much, but yeah. if we can, them to guides that have metrics associated with them that seems more sensible and then okay. lastly on that book chapter <clears throat> um the, there's a use case that we've been asked to provide so it's about trying to um, talk with an organization who is thinking about these impact issues or at least one or two of them and how they're using metrics to consider, for example, partner impact or how they're using metrics to consider ecosystem impact. I don't think we would have one use case that would necessarily do all four, but it might just be useful to have one case where somebody spoke to one or maybe two of these, these things. So that would be the other hope in that meeting, Don, that okay. some I could talk to somebody or we could spend um, one of the OSPO meeting times, like 30 minutes or something, having them kind of walk through um, that case. So yeah, Alice. Hey, so um, so I'm working on the review team for the OSPO book. Um, and if you want Dawn, if you're gonna do some more writing on that chapter, I'm happy to spend some time if it's helpful, um, just talking through like how we're looking to get the chapter structured and how to um, kind of uh, frame some of the conversation from the OSPO point of view. Okay, cool. Are you going to be in the OSPO meeting on Thursday? I think so. Let me just have okay. another look. Because it might yeah, be good to so. talk a little bit about how we should, especially how we should frame that use case. Um, sure thing. Yeah. No, I think that's the one that's in my calendar. Yeah. It's good. Okay, to perfect. Me. Awesome. All right, Matt, Alice and I have got you. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Energy in action. I love it. I'll even put Alice down here too as action. Right now. Can I ask a question about the book and state if we know it? Um, the book or the chapter? Yeah, so in the sense that putting links to things, like clearly what things change and break. Um, so like my first inclination is great, I'd love to point to the practitioner guides, but if the name changes or the link changes, then what's in the book becomes out of date. So I was curious if they're, like if, if it lives on GitHub, then that's easily fixed with a pull request. But if this turns into a physical thing, um, just that might change how we wanna reference things to make them permanently discoverable versus temporarily discoverable? That is a question for Alice. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think the, well, the, the thing around, yes, it lives in GitHub. Uh, and so yes, anyone can make a pull request. Yes, it is planned to go in as a physical book. And, and obviously I think there is some understanding that things in physical books can become out of date um, equally if we're pointing towards things that may or may not be there, then I suppose we, we either would just fix that for, uh, for new versions of the book, or maybe um, if it's an important resource, it would have like a forwarding link, you know, like a 301 redirect or something. Um, the other thing I, we could potentially do is just give plenty of information around, you know, like the title of it, who owns the resource, who are the authors, so people can do track it down a little bit better. I suppose it, if it was something like a PDF, I suppose we could look at trying to host it somewhere, but I, I'm not sure we really want to go quite that far. I haven't thought about this so much yet, so <laughs> happy to take some suggestions. Is this going to be a physical book at some point? Well, I, I think so. I've seen it written down, but it, it, I'm not, uh, I haven't heard it talked about much. Okay. It, it's, it's on the, the, if you go to the, um, Oslo book repo, like there's a timeline, which includes uh -huh. making it into a physical book. 
Okay. Um, but I haven't discussed that with anyone like at all. So I, I don't know if that's an out of date sort of wish that it would become a physical book. Okay. But still like the ultimate goal. Yeah. Um, Sophia Dawn had pointed out the same issue with pointing to those practitioner guides. I had just put them in there for convenience. I, I like the idea of maybe <laughs> pointing people. I think Dawn, you had just kind of said like maybe pointing to a chaos practitioner guide site or just the chaos page in general to describe there are practitioner guides that are available there that talk about these kinds of things. Yeah, I'll look at that. Thanks. Yep. Okay, any other questions about the book chapter? Okay, looks like we're going down to a radical idea. Me again. So oh, get back from Seattle and I got, I got things to say. <laughs> Anarchy everywhere. <laughs> so um, this came up in the metrics working group. Just right now we have, you know, 90 some odd, which is fine. Um, but there's, there is obviously some real consistency in the formatting of our metrics. And some of them are really long, some of them are really nicely done. They just vary highly. And so we had talked about kind of restructuring the metric kind of as a version three in the template is what this would be. So the question in the metric, uh, I see a book question, book chapter question. I can't do <laughs> two things. Um, so the question would stay. So right now in all of the metrics, there's a question. What? Could you mute? So the question would stay at the top of the metric. Um, right now there's two parts. So one is a description and objective. There's kind of two sections and we would merge these sections into just something called like what we're measuring and why we're measuring it. Some sort of descriptive title, but we really wouldn't exceed 200 words on this approximately. Um, the rationale here is some of these descriptions and some of these objectives are really, really long. Um, we would keep two components in here. So how to think about the data would still include filters and data collection strategies. Hey, Peculiar, could you mute for a second? I got it. Thanks. Um, uh, sorry, you said what? Could you mute? Thanks. Okay, so <laughs> this is basically just a restructuring of some of the metric. The visualizations. Yes, would... I'm mute. Okay, thank you. Um, the visualizations would stay um, in the metric as well. Um, but we would remove the tools providing the metric section. Maybe I can show a metric here that might make a little bit more sense. I was, I was part of this discussion and I, I think that what the issue with the tools providing the metric is, is that uh, it's always Grimoire Lab and Augur and how much information is provided varies wildly. So, and it's, a quite, it's really questionable whether or not it's useful. And we can provide that information. So here's a metric, like in the visualizations, we can still provide that information where the, which tool is actually producing the visualization. And then we just don't need a whole section called tools providing the metric. So essentially it's honestly, this it's just a way to start circulating this. So as you can see, so we have contributors and then the question, who are the contributors that would stay the two sections of description and objectives would merge into one section just because they're not always perfectly distinct from one another. I think we confuse ourselves sometimes in terms of what the text is between the two. Implementation would go away as a top level heading and we would just really raise up filters if you look down below a little bit and data collection strategies which is even further down, would become kind of ways to think about the data. And then we would show visualizations, 
which as you can see here. And we decided that even if the visualizations are old, that's okay, because they still help provide insight into the metric. And then really towards the bottom, we would continue to provide references that this metric currently doesn't have, which is okay. And those references would only be to external sources of, of information like blog posts or papers. They wouldn't be references to other metrics. So we don't get in this weird loop of referencing ourselves. And we would still keep contributors when we know the contributors to a particular metric. So it's just a little bit of a reframing on some of the metrics. Um, and that would be it. Oh yeah, Kevin too. Yeah, we would add a, a date, capture date for the pick, the best that we can. On some of them, we may not know that. I could see that like in this case. Um, it was received as a good conversation in the metrics working group. I think it's just a, a way to, to think through it. But that said, um, one of the things that we are going to need support with is we'd really like on the visualizations component, if there's a if there are people who are interested in working with particularly the, the SAS solutions around Augur and 8Knot and Grimoire Lab, to help us build some of the visualizations for some of the metrics, that would be really great. So just folks that might be interested in, in thinking about how they could visualize any of these metrics th through the tools that we have available. And I so, think that's because a lot of the metrics that we developed early where we have old visualizations, like the one you can see here, and we have way better ways of visualizing this now. Yeah. So the, the software has evolved uh, quite a lot. And I think in some cases we have, we have better ways to visualize this, but somebody just has to kind of dig through and, and, and look for new visualizations that we can replace. So if you're interested, um, you can reach out to me on Slack. You can join our metrics working group call either way is fine. But I just wanted to bring this up to folks here and I'll, I'll bring it up again and again and again, just so y'all know kind of how this is going forward. And honestly, I am probably gonna like regret saying this, but I'd really like to get this done by the end of summer, personally myself. <laughs> <I'd> like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we'll see. And that's it for that. Do we have aside from like a timeline by the end of? Somewhere. Do we have uh, like a plan of how those changes are going to roll out, or is it just going to be? I'm not sure. Oh, in terms of how they would roll out, um, I, like I don't have a, a set order, if that's what you mean. But I'm not even sure quite the workflow yet. Like if it would be smart to take these metrics, and I don't know. So like. If, if we're combining, and Kevin suggested he would help too, but if we're combining things like the objective and the description, like how much review do we need on that? Can we just do it in a PR to make this change? Or do we want to do like the whole metric structure, restructure as a Google Doc? Remember how we <clears throat> kind of build them that way? Like pull it out, like do, because there's quite a bit of restructuring and then put it back as a single PR. I'm not sure what the workflow should be for this. Okay. It might need a little more finessing if we're trying to keep some of those to 200 words too. Like that seems like for some of them, that's gonna be a pretty big change. Mm -hmm. So that might require review on that. I think I like the review. The... No, go ahead. I think the review process would be really important for something like this to ensure that there isn't, you know, that there's coherence with what's already there and that the changes are coherent, consistent, and to actually improve things. So, I mean, I might even suggest that we have two reviews on each of these pull requests, because that gets you, I find with software, at least that gets us a much more diverse set of perspectives, tend to find more defects if you require two reviews. But we could do the reviews on, on GitHub as in the PRs. We don't necessarily have to do them in Google Docs. I was, yeah, I'm sorry, that when I said pull request reviews, that's what I meant. I was, uh, I was thinking we could do a, a review in the metrics meeting on the Google Doc. And then when we move it to the pull request, we can do a, a community review. 
through the through that process. So would you suggest that like of the 90 metrics that we create 90 new Google Docs, which is fine. Um, and we like we're gonna have I don't we're I think technically all of these should have a Google Doc. Uh, there's a link in the uh uh yeah, but the Google Docs are out of sync because we've made so many updates as pull requests. Yeah, so yeah. I just recreate them, which is okay. So we, we do link to them in the uh, spreadsheet, right? Um, we only have the Google Docs for the ones that are in development. Oh, I thought we kept those. No, because yeah. they, to Don's point, they were so out of sync. Yeah. But I mean, that's, I don't, that's okay to make them. I don't mind doing that. My concern is trying to balance like a workflow process that doesn't include five people for every every metric. Yeah, I don't want to review ninety metrics revisions in meetings. It'll not, it, then then we shouldn't even do this because it'll never happen. I like, mean, oh, yeah. I mean, so let, let's let's think about this maybe a little pragmatically. I mean, I think that there are going to be a whole set of them that are relatively easy. Like those we can do as pull requests and we can do kind of a streamlined process for those. There are going to be some that you're going to look at them and they're a bit of a mess because some of the early metrics that we've oh. developed um, could use a little work. And I okay. think some of those we're probably going to need to your point to create Google docs and bring them back into like, like we would develop a new metric. But so I think we don't necessarily, I, I wouldn't say that it's like an all of one, uh, or all of the other. I think we can do a hybrid based on how much work the metric needs. Okay. Well, cause like um, you, in the metric meeting, like there was, there's that bot activity metric to your point. Like it's a very nice metric. It's actually really well framed. It's really well articulated. And that probably won't take much time or effort, <laughs> excuse me. But yes, there are others that still have like old, old SQL queries in them. <laughs> They <laughs> were like from 2016 or 17. They're going to require a ton of time. Okay. So is the is the idea to maybe assign one person to take the lead on a metric? That person can decide if it's if it's an easy fix. They'll just do a GitHub pull request. If it needs a little more discussion, then they'll create a Google Doc and, and bring so. it for review into the metrics meeting. Yeah, maybe so. So I have um, Kevin, you know, on that on the um, metric spreadsheet. Yeah, there is that. There is a metrics audit tag tab down at the bottom. Maybe I could make a column like an F. You know what I mean? That's like candidate for. Scroll down to the bottom. The tab on the bottom. It's called metrics audit. Yeah. So I've been, I mean, we've been kind of, you know, doing some work along this lines. Yeah, Whether those, those two, this one needs an update, sir. I think I dropped yeah. those in. <laughs> exactly. So I've been very slowly working my way through this. Just to confirm a few things. Um, so maybe I could kind of finish D, column D first, that context tag column, and then candidate for a model. And that's just a judgment call, but then make a column F, which is like candidate for quick review kind of thing. Okay, this is helpful. Thank you, everybody. Matt, are these, is this list updated too? Like, I don't know when you pulled that, but have we uh, had it? No, we have about 10 behind. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, this, is a, yeah I mean, this, this is hard. I mean, it's, it's just hard. a lot of documents. And it's, if we're going to, I feel like if we're going to lean into these documents as a critical, like, artifact of the chaos project, <laughs> we probably need to, like, really make sure that. <laughs> but they're good <laughs> across the board. Is this something that we might want to 
uh, have a project manager help out with? If so, we can we can loop them in, help us organize the, the tasks so it's not just you. It seems like it's just you doing this right now, Matt. Um, I mean, unless you want to just like just do it, but I'm not sure what the I'm not, I honestly don't know. We just need we need people just to go, go through and review. Like I need, we need to build the, if, if we agree on that template, we need to like build that out a little bit more. Like what I have here is pretty rugged. You know what I mean? Like it's pretty vague. So we'd probably need to build out a new template if people seem to like this idea. Um, if you like that template idea, then we probably need to identify which ones to Don's point are candidates for quick review and which ones are candidates for a more lengthy review. Um, then we probably just need to decide, do we take on the quick review ones first or do we do the lengthy review ones second or first? I mean, whatever, like what's the order? Um, but at, at some point, like that stuff is not that hard, but at some point we're gonna need people to help with the content and modify that content or make the PRs. And if it's, if it is just me and Kevin doing it, it's just going to, that's summer is like, so I laughed when I said that, but it's just going to take a long time. Um, Bernard has volunteered to help on that in the past as well. I, I would, I don't want to volunteer it, but I would imagine he would help as well. Okay. The more volunteers we can get, the better to help with content. Less about project management, probably. More about people helping with content creation. And the visualizations and merging the merging the description and objective. Whatever it might be. Yeah, Sophia. I was going to think in the past when we've done major revision work streams like this, they've we've passed it back to the original groups that wrote the metric, but I guess maybe the trouble is now that a lot, a lot of those groups don't exist anymore because we sort of reorganized the working group structure. Um, Cause I, I do feel like it's sort of unreasonable to expect you and Kevin to do all of it, where I think if each working group as they were received like two or three updates, here's the new template, we'll rework it. That could easily be done by the group in a sit down. So I'm curious, I know, given that we have sort of regrouped um, that me that method doesn't really work anymore for our older metrics, but I'm curious if we could do something like that. Like, I think I wouldn't want you and Kevin to do all of it um, or make volunteers do it versus those that are closest to it, that wrote it, being able to help update it. But I'm not quite sure how to delegate that now without the structure. Don did point out join the metrics development working group. So we at least do have that for what it's worth. So yeah, Sean. We could probably put some of those in, oh, I'm sorry, you had your hand up. Go ahead, Kevin. I was just gonna say, we could probably, uh, the DEI working group meets every week. Uh, the DEI metrics, we probably could send to that group and ask them to do it. Uh, Although there is there is a lot of overlap on who attends those meetings and uh, and the metrics meetings as well, so so it might just be the same people anyway. That's good. I think we're out of time, so we can continue this next time. Do you have a lot to leave us with, Sean. Just uh, I think relying on an to the extent that we can rely on asynchronous review processes and even editing processes through this, I think it enables more people to be involved and makes the problem more solvable in the time frame of this summer. To the extent we have to meet about every metric, I think it the summer becomes unrealistic fairly quickly. Great. Right, well, thanks, everybody. I appreciate the thoughts. OK, we can continue next week and also async as well in Slack. So thanks, everybody. Right. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you here next week. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.